G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. We are here on, I believe it's called Rocky River, not 100% sure, but uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is EGC TV's The Elite Classic that we're going to be casting today. And boy, oh boy, have we got an absolute banger of a game. Sporting in over on the east side of the map in the color teal, playing as Jean of Arc, representing Team Elephant. We've got CSO and on the north side of the map in the color red, representing Izzy Dream, playing as the Mongols. It's Marine Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a casted game. It is an absolute pleasure to have your company. Let us get to it because boy, oh boy, have we got a good one in store for you today. Let me, uh, let me hit, hit a button. I'm trying to find a button right here to follow this card. Why can't I follow this card? Drongo, get it, get yourself together. There we go. There we go. Once I follow the card, I can hit that button. Now we can both together watch the sheep and the scouts and the glaven. That's a Simpsons reference. I hope you guys get that. What, what is it? Professor Frink? I think that was it. Anyway, welcome. Uh, let's talk a little bit about today, about today's matchup and about why we're casting this game. If you didn't see the previous two videos, that's okay. I'm not going to hold it against you, but I will warn you what I'm about to say may spoil the outcome of those videos. So if you don't want to go watch them, that's fine. Uh, if you do want to go watch them, go do it because they were the first two games in this series. We are in a best of three. This is the final game. That is correct. 1-1 one, one in this series so far. CSO winning one game, Marine Lord winning one game, and the winner of this game goes on to become the greatest player uh, that we will that we will cast today. Uh, we'll say that much. I, I'm going to be honest, though. CSO, this guy is starting to impress me greatly. Not only the fact that he managed to make it all the way through to the round robin stage for EGC TV's tournament, but also the fact that, uh, well, he managed to take out Marine Lord in a tournament game. That is absolutely ludicrous. And this guy in my books has just gone up like 75,000 ranks. He wasn't that low, Drongo. Okay, he's gone up like 17 ranks in my head. Let's talk a little bit about this matchup. We have got ourselves a fun matchup. Now, why is this a fun matchup? It's a fun matchup because you have got Marine Lord who opens up with a barracks. And naturally, this is a Mongol thing, right? You, you, you do your standard Mongol thing. You get your villager. You throw down your outpost. You have fun. There's the villager. There's the spearman. Okay. And why is that fun? Well, that's fun because on the other side of the map, we have got the School of Cavalry. And you want to know what counters cavalry and schools of them? They're not, they're, they're kind of like fish in a way. Uh, spearmen, spearmen do. Uh, and so naturally you can see how this becomes a very fun matchup to cast because you've got Joan of Arc, a civilization that doesn't do particularly well early against the Mongols, up against the Mongols, and it's going to be absolutely hectic. Two players that are pretty damn close in skill fighting up in this matchup. So I'm curious to see exactly how it goes, whether CSO is going to be able to hold on in the early game against Marine Lord or not. And we now start to see those villagers under pressure. Outpost will be coming down on this gold. Now, keep in mind, there are going to be options for CSO in the event that this gold becomes no longer available. But have a look at this. We've got a very high concentration of gold towards the north side of the map for CSO. Deletes the mining camp. I don't know whether the bounty came off, but I'm going to assume it probably didn't because he wouldn't delete it unless he knew that he could get it off safely. But actually, none of these villagers have got damage on them. Somebody go back right now and rewind and tell me whether that bounty came through because I have a sneaky suspicion that Khan actually fired at the mining camp because none of those villagers have low HP. None of them have even got like one damage on them. I think that bounty probably went through unless he repaired it at the last second, but that's that's like a high level thing that you've, you've got to be able to do. I don't, I don't reckon that would happen. Silver Tree coming up as well. Have a look at this. Both players aging up at the same time. Bit of a delayed age up here. Only two villagers on this. Obviously, one of them is Joan of Arc. Now, speaking of Joan of Arc, have a look down there in the bottom left-hand corner. You can probably see it right there. That is the Joan of Arc XP bar. Yep. I know, they said the technology wasn't there. We asked them and they said, Drongo, look, the technology for that kind of thing in a spectator mode, in a caster mode, just doesn't exist. Not in 2024. It is forecasted uh, by, by 2028. We will have supercomputers capable of producing AI that are able to speculate and anticipate the XP of Joan of Arc. But I've said, look, Microsoft, I, I, I appreciate with everything with what you're doing with OpenAI and all that good stuff, but... I've got it. And here we are. That's it. That's my story. That's my TED talk. Thank you for coming. <laughs> that, that was a little bit excessive. Speaking of AI, can we just talk about AI for a bit? Like, it is starting to get crazy, man. It is like... I, I remember not too long ago where 
um, th there was there was a poll. I, I think it was on Reddit because I'm, I'm part of a couple of AI communities. Like one of them is called Singularity. And it, it was asking like, do you think AGI has already been reached and we just don't know it yet? And I, I think at this at, at that stage, there was like 15% of people that said yes and everybody else said no. And in my mind, I'm like, I, I genuinely think it is. Like, I, I think that people will probably look back at GPT-4 and be like, that's that was pretty close to AGI. Like th that became the point where it was very difficult for us to tell it apart, just mainly because of the agent system, I think, that it's capable of using. It really allows it to just go absolutely ham. And I, I think, obviously, you know, I, I'm nowhere, I'm not educated on this subject, right? Like, I, I'm not an engineer, uh, but... I will say, I, I'm, I'm very interested in seeing where it will go, and I'm, I'm obviously very scared, like most people should be. Uh, it's crazy just how absolutely ludicrous it is getting, but let's focus less on AI and more on our players because we don't have any AI players today. We've only got... We've only got uh, we've only got real players for you today. And have a look at this. They're just avoiding the spears. Instead, going to be going after the villager. Notice that there's horsemen out today. Now, why are there horsemen out today? They're horsemen because we don't have access to gold. So naturally, if we don't have access to gold, we can't make units that cost gold. So that is where CSO is coming from. That's his mindset here. And we see that silver tree in the bottom left-hand corner has actually been thrown down. And look at this. We've just got reinforcements continuing to come in. Spears also going to be coming out from CSO and the archers. So going for that GUA 111 opening. A very happy bear. Bear? A very happy bear right now. <laughs> very happy bear. Uh, outpost firing in on that archer. Does have its arrow slits through. Marine Lord, he's, he's a happy camper. And speaking of camping, have a look at this. We've got a trade post that is quite literally on the opposite side of the map for him. A really good position here. One thing that is going to scare CSO this game is going to be Mongol trade. But if there's any civilization that can deal with it, it is CSO on the Joan of Arc. I think Joan of Arc is probably one of the best civilizations at dealing with trade just because they've got access to the knight in the feudal age. And it means that if you do try and get any traders out, that it's going to be a lot less forgiving for you if those knights do make connections. So we'll keep an eye out for it. Wheelbarrow has come through now for CSO. Keep in mind that the upgrades for CSO are going to be cheaper. He does pay full price though for the, uh, for the buildings. And now looking to siege down this outpost. He wants his gold back. Joan of Arc going to be coming through. He's actually gone with the Hunter instead of going with the Melee. Uh, this is not something I expected to see, but going to be able to siege this one down. You can see he's beginning to move in close towards this uh, outpost. Wants to make sure he's able to clean up the spears. And there they go. Look at it. Get a little bit of a run on it. Firing off Joan of Arc as well. Unfortunately, it looks like the Spearman will go down and she's going to pick up plenty of experience here. So having herself a very nice early game so far, cleaning up this gold and not even even moving out over towards the east side. I do like, I, I got to respect that if you just contest your main goal. But how much damage did... Mar okay. I wasn't even looking at the resources. Second TC coming in on the gold as well. So very nice. Keep in mind, CSO will be very very aware of the possibility of trade so let's have a look and see how cso looks to play it i wouldn't be surprised if we see an outpost or even the scout looking to camp up here just to make sure the other thing to note is that marine lord could look to trade down towards this southern angle if he wanted to keep keep things quiet uh, however, I feel like it's probably not going to happen. It's just making more sense at this stage of the game to go across the map. Um, but we could look to see outposts. And depending on how Marine Lord wants to play this, he could look to stay in Feudal Age for quite some time. Obviously, with the Keshik in the Feudal Age, he's got something to spend gold on, though. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we did see uh, quite a long Feudal Age coming out. And there's the first of the Keshiks now going to be looking to meet the scout on the north side of the map. Second Town Center comes through and... If, if you had to take a guess, right? If you had to hazard a guess and say to yourself, okay, what's what's going to what's gonna come out on top? Is it going to be the two town center or is it the Mongol trade? I'll give you the answer because I already know it. It is going to be the Mongol trade. The Mongol trade is just, it is just absolutely so far ahead of the second town center. I, mean, I shouldn't say so far ahead, but it's, it's no, it's so far ahead. I, I think there's just so many factors, right? Like number one is that you've got free gold. Number two, it's that you've got those extra resources that begin to come through as well. Let's check in over in the, on that scout. You're up to some naughty little stuff over here. Looks like instead he is going to spot out the trade. Have a look at that. 76 gold on it as well. That is a maximum distance trade plus about two uh, just because he's got that angle on it. Remember, if you've got the, the corner trade, it's probably about 73, 74, somewhere around that. So he's got that extra little bit going on it. Look at this. The horseman immediately coming out to meet over on this northern position. So he knows exactly what is up. Khan going to be coming in. We got ourselves a double hero battle this game. Villagers getting taken out. That's one. Where's the second one? Not going to happen. He's gone for the spears instead. That's two. 
Marine Lord now looking to focus down. Doesn't get the third one. Two health that manages to survive by. Joan of Arc. She's got plenty of charges in the bank. Going to be looking to fire off down on these archers. Only, what is it, 40 damage? I think you're 40 damage. So not quite a one shot, but will be a two shot. Town Center firing off. Vil's going to have to fall back over towards the second wood line. Meanwhile, towards that top side, we've got the traders that are coming across the map. And meanwhile, horsemen are making their way through. This is going to be the first trader that comes online. Second one is on the way already. You can see that CSO is looking to cause havoc in this game for Marine Lord. He does not want him to have this ability to go for that big uncontested boom. So not only does he have his backup plan, the second TC, but he's also got the main plan, and that's going to be these traders that are getting eliminated by the horsemen. Now we start to see more upgrades on the way. He's already got double Broadaxe, already got his Wheelbarrow. Now going to be looking to pick up Forestry together with Horticulture. Spearman going to come out here looking to be met by a couple of horsemen. Unfortunately, they're only interested in one naughty little man down here, and that's going to be the trader, the man who runs that Silk Road. And, uh, well, the horseman manages to make, make its way away. Scout also still alive out here. It does have that ability to... Uh, to heal itself up, remember. And we start to see a bit of an expansion out towards this top side. Outpost going to be thrown down as well. No walls up just yet. I would love to see some walls on this bottom side. Just a nice wall across here. You don't really need a wall here. Um, I take it back. I don't think you need a wall there. It, it, where do you need walls on the, on, in this map? I don't even think... Does he even really need it? Maybe you could... It, it's too far away. Uh, it's too far away. And with the position of the TC and the gold at the front... See, I feel like you probably could have thrown TC at the back here, looked to take this, and then walled across here. And then that would have been a little bit safer because you are quite exposed out here towards the front. And I think... I mean, CSO knew about this, but decided that the TC on the front was the right call. And I wonder why that is. What was it that made him, in his mind, go, I want this? Was it because it was kind of close to the deer as well? I think that could be it. Because he's managed to take quite a bit off this deer hunt. I think that's got to be it, because the, the, the hunt was, like, right here, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. It was the hunt. All right, speaking of hunts, knights are out. They're on the hunt. They're looking to try and find a way through. We'll keep an eye on it and see how it goes. Maybe get ourselves a little bit of picture in picture, just in case things decide to go well over on that side of the map. Meanwhile, we'll check in with Marine Lord and see how he's doing on that defensive. He's actually going to spot it out, so we're not even going to need that picture in picture as Marine Lord able to chase away his opponent from this north side. Expect to see outposts coming up shortly. There they are, looking to try and give a little bit of movement speed bonus. Remember that that YAM network bonus, so that movement speed bonus that's propagated by outposts, it does affect cavalry as well as donkeys, or work or traders rather, because um, they, they're donkeys. I think they're donkeys. They're not donkeys, are they? They're, they're horses. That's awkward. I thought they were donkeys. Where, why were they? Why did I think they were donkeys? Was it, is it like, there's a civilization that has donkey traders, isn't there? It's going to be like the Ayyubids or something. Anyway, we'll, we'll worry about that another time, Drongo, as uh, we've got more important stuff to focus on right now. But uh, yeah, Yam Network does still affect them. Keep that in mind. Firing off now. Joan of Arc getting a big shot on those Keshiks. Needs to look probably towards those spears, though. And you can see the Archer numbers is quite low uh, for CSO at this stage. Now coming in on that top side, as long as she keeps Joan alive, CSO should be fine throughout this fight. And remember, every single fight that happens here, this, is, this gets better. Nice big heal coming through for Joan. But every single fight that you take as Joan is a good thing. It pushes you closer to level 3, and that's where you want to be. Level 3, especially when your opponent is in Feudal Age, is incredibly good for you. Uh, now, one thing to note is traders continuing to build here. Marine Lord currently sits on 8 traders. Ideally for CSO, he wants that knight number to continue improving. He wants to get a higher knight number so that he can look to put that pressure over on that north side of the map. Alternatively, he can look to put pressure over on the west side, but it's so much further for him to run. Like, when you think about it, he's got to go all the way around from here. Like, it, it's quite literally on the opposite side of the map compared to hitting this top side where it's only a very, very short distance. So that is something to consider because not only will his army be out of position uh, for those fights, it will be out of position for the defense as well. But it does look like players are continuing to build up. Both of them still making military at this stage of the game. We'll ride on board with Marine Lord and see how the base is doing. Blacksmith is down. Upgrades are through for ranged upgrades so far. Beautiful use of the scouting falcon. How good is that? How good is that? Just such a smart move. Throwing it up the hill just so he can spot out where his opponent's units are. It's so difficult fighting up the hill because of the lack of line of sight. But Marine Lord makes it look easy with that scouting falcon. Really, really smart move there. And continues that trade boom behind this. Outpost will continue to come up. And you can see that that glowing bonus they've got is going to be that YAM network. So a little bit of extra movement speed. 1.15 versus the 1.0 
But there it is. The Royal Knight making its way through. Village is immediately jumping inside the outpost, but CSO a little bit scared. How did he thread the needle? Look at that. Somehow manages to find a way through the line of sight that is, uh, that is down there. Meanwhile, let's check in with CSO as that wall does finally come in. It, it's it's a wall. Oh, he does have berries down here as well. Actually, that's that's a pretty good wall. I'll give him that. I'll, I'll give my former self that though. To be honest, I was I was like advocating for a wall across here. Didn't see these berries. That though that wall makes sense. Unfortunately, it makes so much sense that Marine Lord was raiding at the exact same time. That's how much sense it made to get that bloody wall up. And it, he's only been building it for like twelve seconds, and the poor guy's gone down straight away. You hate to see it. All right. Well, now starting to push forward. CSO realizes, well, hold on a minute. If you're Keshix and Khan are down there, then all of a sudden that means I've got the ability to push over towards this north side. And that's exactly what he does, but he needs to be careful because these Keshix can cause havoc, but Marine Lord unfortunately doesn't know about the units being rallied to his opponent's base. Slowly and steadily, though, they continue to aggress upon each other. We'll right on board and check in now and see how it's going. Meanwhile, on that backside, the Knights look like they're going to be coming in. CSO going to be making moves for that army to come a little bit closer towards his base as well. Whoa, 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 Durango. Losing it over there. Somehow my mace, my, my mouse, my mouse uh, went off screen. And, uh, well, well, we'll have to fix that one up. All right, I fixed it. I fixed it. I didn't fix it. Meanwhile, towards the top side. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, all the traders just making a, an absolute run for it now. Meanwhile, meanwhile, hold your horses. Defense going on down there. Meanwhile, Kashyyyk's now making their way through. Archer numbers are looking good. We've got the 1-1-1 one, one, one composition coming in. No spears out for Joan of Arc at this stage. She's going to get picked off. What happened? She was standing still. It looked like she got locked out of heaven all of a sudden. Things were not looking pretty for her. But unfortunately, she's gone to heaven now. Kashyyyk numbers still once again starting to fall. But look at the Archer. Ar Archer's able to focus down on those spearmen. And CSO doing an incredible job this game at keeping his opponent Balls to the walls. Look at this. Forcing back these traders once again. And now CSO says, hey, how you doing? I burnt down your first outpost. Second outpost is going to be coming up next. And look at this. Control over this top side completely. Needs to start thinking about the bottom side, though, because that's where Marine Lord is going to go next. Mark my words. Let's have a look. I reckon he's already making moves down there. Let's have a look and see. Doesn't look like it just yet, but... We can see CSO's in position. He knows exactly what his opponent is up to. We'll keep an eye up on that army and see what the plan is going to be for him as more and more villagers now going to get cleaned up here for him. He's having an absolute field day. CSO taking out villagers, taking out traders. He is he's living the best life right now. He's living a good life. And talk about like long feudal ages. We've seen throughout this series so many games that have just gone really heavy on the feudal ages. And this one is another one of them. 17 minutes through. It's only now that the Kurultai is getting put down. Knights once again through onto the back line. CSO able to keep these traders down. Trader number is on eight at the moment. And that's exactly where it needs to be. Meanwhile, the economy is booming for CSO. He has had no real issues in the base. Of course, he's had to deal with raids. He's had to deal with problematic Keshiks, but for the most part, he's been pretty decent with it. And now, completely cancelling out that trade post in the north. He's also got units on this southern sacred or southern trade site. He's feeling really good. I can't believe we're watching this right now as Age Brother Level 3 on Joan of Arc comes through. Men at Arms get popped out as well. She's got that little bonus damage against the against the spearmen. and that'll help her out a huge amount. And have we got an upset on our hands? I think we might. This is starting to look really good for CSO in this game. Who is this guy? We need to find out more about him. We need to talk about his story because I tell you what, he has come out of nowhere. I don't think I've seen... Like, well, I've obviously casted his games before, right? Like, I know who CSO is, but, like, you can't just come out here and be beat Marine Lord in a best of three in tournament games. Like, do you know who Marine Lord is? Th this guy's untouchable. Oh, this is, this is ludicrous. Speaking of ludicrous, Strongo, it's 18 minutes. Let's get those turned around. There we go. All right, Joan of Arc slowly losing her health here. Uh, it is it is getting whittled down. You can see she's only got the two armor here. But uh, let's check in and see how those numbers are doing as they continue to build. Look at this, 1,800 food in the bank, 2,000 food a minute. Probably need a little bit of gold there. There we go, CSO finally going to be adding in villagers over onto gold. I'd love to see more walls starting to come up because we do have these open walls towards the south. I fear that CSO may have forgotten about getting them up because these are pretty important to get up and... Have a look at this. The traders did indeed make their way down towards that southern migration point. I don't know exactly what happened uh, to them. Uh, to, the, to those, uh, the, uh, sorry, the knights that were down there. The royal knights. Uh, but uh, obviously, no longer there. 
CSO may have overplayed his hands, Archers. Getting caught a little bit out of position. He's close to aging up. Have a look at the resources he's got in the bank. He knows he wants it. But unfortunately, veterans, he's come through on the Keshiks. And now Marine Lord finds a beautiful little position to take out his opponents. The Keshiks, once again, going to be looking to go after all these Archers. No, no men at arms here. No uh, spears at all to defend this. But to CSO do the right thing. He looks to go into the base of Marine Lord and say, hey, if you want to defend against me, you're going to need to bring everybody. But looks like Marine Lord doesn't take the bait, beginning to move forward a little bit at a time. Archers on the backside, plus two's come through. Remember, they've also got the Kurultai in tow. I don't know exactly where it is. There it is, uh, but it is in tow. That'll give him plenty of damage. Needs to get that Royal Institute up. Once the Institute is up, he does have resources to get th those extra upgrades coming through. He's got so much food in the bank. Probably even me needs to move into Horsemen at this stage just because, well, if, if you're making Horsemen, at least then you're spending your food, you're spending your wood. You don't, you leave that gold. That, that's the stuff that you need to try and keep at the moment. In the middle of the map though. Making his way through. It looks like the town center is going to be under pressure. Villager numbers have started to fall. You can see the Keshiks are making their way through the base. A distinct lack of walls is what's going to hurt him here. And CSO now exhausting that gold on the front. Veterancy on the way through. He's got Veterancy on the Archers, Veterancy on the Royal Knights, as well as plus two ranged attack. That's going to be all he needs to fight this. He could also look for additional upgrades like your Royal Bloodlines, which could be very helpful at this stage, but it's going to take 90 seconds to come through. So you really got to ask the question, should I be going for that right now? Probably not. Down 17 villages. Marine Lord looks to get a couple back on the board here. Trying his best to hold on in this fight. No raids happening over on his side of the map. Those traders will be returning back to their... They're originally planned broadcast and trade routes uh, very, very soon. Plus two, almost through. I would have loved to have seen a second blacksmith as well. There's the Royal Bloodlines. It's going to take 90 seconds though. So it's really one of those situations where maybe you should have thought about queuing that up first if you really thought, okay, I've got that. Because that, that would have been, you know, 45 seconds ago, you would have had that in. You can see right now, only balanced projectiles coming in. And then you can kind of time everything together to hit. But plus two is going to be in. It's going to look to try and tee off these archers towards the middle. Advantage definitely sits with Marine Lord in regard to the numbers advantage here. But he does have Joan of Arc on his side, CSO does. Not to mention the Royal Knights. Looking to try and get that upgrade through. Veterancy on the Spears, not yet in just yet. No, I take it back. They do have their Veterancy coming through. And now, once again, diving on in. Look at the number of Royal uh, Royal Knights that are here on the front. Doing a wonderful job of defending. Men at Arms getting called out. Going to be able to counter out those Spears. Remember that he's looking to try and tank those up. Royal Knight numbers have begun to fall, though, and that's the key factor that's going to determine what wins these fights. You can see right here that he's still only about 60% of the way through, picking up plenty of XP. Joan's still got health on here if she wants to try and tank this up, falling back into the into the, the, uh, into the 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 farmland here of the French player or the Joan of Arc player. It's not a good position for him to be in. It's continuing to rally in more and more units. Joan of Arc holding on for dear life, able to pick off that front Keshik. And now all of the cavalry has gone down in this fight with the exception of a single Royal Knight and a single Joan of Arc. That was a tough fight right there, but CSO is holding on for dear life. It looks like he's not going to be the only one who was uh, looking to get a piece of him, Marine Lord, as uh, the wolf, unfortunately, tried its best. Didn't work out for him, though. Rushing up a house here. No, that's a mining camp. I apologize. Vil's on the move. There's a lot of villagers here. He's got to be careful. He could lose a lot in this situation. CSO is only up four villagers now. And remember, Marine Lord, he returns to his previously uh, broadcasted... What's it? What is, we, re, we, we now return to your previously brought... What is it? Scheduled broadcasting. That's the one. Uh, that's what he's returning to. Villagers scrambling. And we can see we called this out earlier. The fact that your your gold mines are all concentrated towards this top site. Compare that to Marine Lord. He's got gold on the south, gold on the south, gold on the north, gold on the north. It makes it much easier for Marine Lord to stay versatile, to stay flexible. He can just move wherever he likes. Whereas CSO doesn't have that option. If he gets blocked out, he gets locked out forever. And this is really dangerous. Part of the reason why I would have loved to have seen walls up here is very much for that reason. You know, archers sitting be behind a wall uh, are going to be very, very difficult to, to stop. Uh, whereas uh, archers without that wall, it's a little bit of a different story. Marine Lord continuing to rally in more and more units here. He's taken the villager lead. Joan of Arc going to be moving across the map together with some mounted, rather some veteran royal knights. Villagers migrating once again. You can see how hard it is for CSO here. Trying his best to hold on. Sacred Sight now being captured in the middle of the map. No, it's Joan of Arc and she's, she's, uh, she's thrown away her hand. She's shown her hand. 
And uh, the raid now looking to come through, trying to find any units in here and ideally avoid them because it's villagers that CSO is going to be after. Can look to turn the tides of battle with that little bit of a little bit of a divine arrow. Coral Tide on the front once again. Pressure going to be put on here. I'd love to see Marine Lord begin to think about siege. Improved siege engineering is now coming through, and this is exactly what we were, well, exactly what I was hoping for because it means Marine Lord uh, will begin to throw down a mango. Uh, most likely, it's, you're going to see a mango or two thrown down. Uh, and then maybe even a trebuchet. But ideally, you'd want to see before that trebuchet comes down, you want to see outposts. So if villagers could be brought up, that would be wonderful. Uh, but he may have some trouble just considering the fact that we have got so many damn knights roaming around this map. Don't. Where is she? Look at all. Look at the production that is back here. Absolutely ludicrous amounts of production. Horsemen coming through. No veterancy just yet, but does obviously have that Royal Bloodlines upgrade. We are still in the Castle Age, so it's going to be feeling very good. And look at these damn spearmen chasing the entire length of the map. So damn frustrating to deal with. Do we have villagers moving up? Doesn't look like it just yet. I'd love to see just four or five villagers pulled up for Marine Lord. We see Springwood emplacements now starting to come through. And here we go on that top side. Outpost now moving in for CSO. He's looking to contest this. There's the Springwood emplacement. So Marine Lord looking to try and shut it down. And here we go. A keep on the defensive now for CSO as he looks to hold on a little bit longer. Meanwhile, over towards that west side, Joan of Arc is nowhere to be seen. And that's problematic because ideally we want Joan of Arc to be here so that she's collecting experience. Speaking of experience at the moment, Joan of Arc sitting at about halfway to that level four so still quite some time before she reaches it sprinkled in placement is coming up bill's going to look to try and siege down this outpost unfortunately there is a keshik here that's going to be able to clean up the villagers together with the villagers uh should be able to clean up the outpost and now meanwhile back towards that south side apologies as there's the mangonel coming through Marine Lord was looking for it. He's found it. Big connection onto the back line. Manages to hit about eight archers there. Royal Knights coming through. Looking to find their way through and charging. Remember that Joan of Arc will be able to get those heals off. Nice little heal. Cleans up the mango. And Joan to save the day. Looks like our hero has finally arrived. It was, took some time, but she was on her way. And now moving forward, it's going to be that Arbolatria archer combo. Hopefully we start to see a couple more production facilities thrown down around. Actually, no, never mind. We're not playing the French here, Drongo. We're playing Joan of Arc. Oh, if she can catch this this could be really detrimental to marine lord especially losing the cruel tie on this side of the map here but it looks like marine lord will manage to get the cruel tie out alive here let's do a quick eco check marine lord up by 23 economic units this game 27 traders and this is just a classic case of well the the mongols you can keep them down for 15 minutes you can keep them down for 20 but you let them breathe for five and all of a sudden you've got a problem and that's where we sit currently CSO now down 24 workers. Now, granted, he's lost 26 workers this game, despite obviously taking out 12 of Marine Lords, but still, there is a pretty distinct advantage now for Marine Lord. But have a look at this onto the front line. It's going to be the movement speed that gets thrown down here, looking to try and move them up. And look at the Coral Tire just being an absolute boss right now. He's like, I don't care. I'm just going to drive around, trying to block out this. Going to be able to find it. Who, do, who needs a Coral Tire? I don't even need a Coral Tire. I'm just going to... I'm just going to... I'm just going to drive around in circles around your army and Marine Lord cleaning up right now. 27 minutes into this game. It looks like it could be all over Red Rover just as soon as we thought CSO was going to be victorious this game. It looks like Marine Lord manages to find a way back into it. Somehow, some way, Marine Lord is now in the driving position. He's in pole position. He's got a beautiful economy that is kicking behind this. Trade numbers are looking really good. He could be thinking about Imperial shortly as well. And remember, once Imperial comes around, it, it, that, that's it, man. Elite Spears just win the game. There's no two ways about it. The great thing about Mongol Spears is because of that outpost yam network propagation, they just run so fast. They just run so damn fast. And then you throw the Khan in on top of it and you've got like these super little speedy boys that just kill everything. You got to be real careful with them. Anyway, battering ramps now going to start coming up. When it comes to upgrades for CSO, there's a few that he could look to pick up here. But to be honest, I mean, maybe Gambesons, that that could do for him. There's the white stupor. There we go. Just as soon as we mentioned Imperial Age, Marine Lord clicks it within, what, within 10 seconds, 15 seconds. So he knew he was priming for it. And once he goes up to Imperial Age. I mean, he could probably move into Elite Crossbows. Crossbows are, of course, notoriously good for the Mongols as well. He's got quite a few of them out on the map. 
Uh, but now we start to see those battering rams working down the front of the base. He's got five rams out so far. Definitely the right call instead of going for the trebuchet. Trebuchet, obviously, a very difficult unit uh, if it does get exposed. And you need quite a bit of defense for it. Most most notably, you need those outposts on the front line. But Marine Lord now 182 population. Compared to CSO at 125, he's going to be trying to hold on for dear life. Level 4 for Joan of Arc almost coming through here. Have a look at this. Not too long to go. This fight, she should hopefully get it. And once she's online, things may change in favor of Joan of Arc. And there it is. She's online. The Markswoman has arrived, firing off that cannon from the back line. Have a look at the damage she's dealing out there. Look at those shots. I don't even know which one it is. 150 damage. That's a lot of damage right there. She's basically one shot in Keshik's at this stage. 150 damage. Joan of Arc, the Markswoman is here. I don't think... Have we even seen the Markswoman before? I don't think I've ever seen the Markswoman. Look at this. It looks like she's holding a, a didgeridoo. That, this thing is huge. All right. Well, this is a tough little spot, to say the least, for CSO. Backed into the corner. Not a whole lot of gold left. 1,700 on this one. Does have the secondary one. Only three villagers building this keep. This You're begging. You're begging for a disaster right there. Joan now looking to come through. Got to be careful. She's got so much armor, though. She doesn't care right now. She's like a, a honey bear. And look at this. She's a siege cavalry. She's not even heavy cavalry. She's siege cavalry. Wait, does that mean that she gets countered by Culverin? <laughs> does she get countered by, like, Culverin and... and and uh, Springles. It, it might be the... Oh my, oh my lord, the Royal Cannon is out. Have a look at this. Turns the tide. Immediately gets the champions out as well. How many champions are we talking? Cannon now firing off. What is up? CSO says, I don't care that I'm down 25 workers. I don't care about it, mate. I've got level four Joe now looking to fire off on the front line. The cannon's going to help out a little bit as well. Pops that extra. What is it? Attack speed that she's got right there? It's something. I can see it glowing. The extra something or other. Firing off of these units. Look at the range she's got. She's got seven. She's a longbow. She's a longbow on a horse that does damage like a truck. Watch out as she turns the tide of battle. Just when we thought it was in the favor of Marine Lord, CSO says, Hey, Drongo, how you doing? Have a look at this right here for you. <laughs> what are these shots? And now Arbolatria numbers starting to look good. Gambersons as well as the Pavis shields. Coming online and those Arbola Trio pushing down the hill. This is something of beauty we are witnessing here. Joan of Arc has reached her power spike. Well, I'm not talking about Imperial Age, baby. I'm talking about level four of Mark's woman. She is online. Wow. We are witnessing something of greatness now, ladies and gentlemen. This is absolutely incredible. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Kurultai, where is it? The Kurultai falling back. You can see right now Pax Mongolica has, has come through for Marine Lord, getting a little bit of extra health on these outposts. But I tell you what, things are going to be worrisome. Look at this Arbola Tria. No Gambesons through just yet. Apologies. I thought I'd seen it, but uh, I, I've, I've obviously just said Gambesons when I should have said Pavis Shields. Uh, apologies. All right, got to be careful not to lose that cannon. It's an expensive one. Uh, keep in mind that it can actually deploy without being, uh, or without uh, without that little drop down timing that it takes. Spears now going to be coming out, looking to focus down the Khan. One more shot, not going to happen. Ablatre numbers still looking pretty good here. Cannon firing off, hits the spear, and once again, Joan of Arc is starting to cause me a little bit of concern here. Firing off towards these. How much? How much base damage does she do? She, she, does she do? She has 38 base damage. She's, so she's a hand cannon here. Uh, but she does have that divine blast, which obviously pretty much one shots every single unit alive here. She could look to take out the Khan right now. Not going to happen. Takes out a, a crossbow instead. There's the Khan going down on that backside. And the Pavish shield now gives that seven ranged armor. We see that the Kurultai is looking to push up. Unfortunately going to be blocked out. Meanwhile, Sacred Sites being neutralized in the background or being taken rather. No, no. No, no, not three sacred sites. Oh, we're going to see that message on my screen. No, please. This is something... Okay, I'm calling all hackers, all developers, whether you know C+, C sharp, C minor, whatever it is you know, you need to find a way right now to stop the message that's about to show up on our screens. This message is the worst message. I'm not talking about this one. I'm talking about this one. It, it, it breaks through even the, the strongest of cinematic modes. Go on, show it to me. Show it to me. Wait, where is it? Ah, there it is. You thought, you thought you'd escaped it. Look, it comes through no matter what, man. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be on my deathbed, dude. I'll be being read my, my rights. And like, just as I'm about to go, they'll be like, a new objective. Neutralize a sacred site. I'll be like, no! <laughs> no, not now. Anytime but now. All right, big attacks on the backside. Keshix, they've got their elite upgrades through. Speaking of elite upgrades, CSO, no elite units in sight. He's going to look to try and shut down the trade, realizing that's where his opponent 
is is really quite well positioned, but now CSO going to have to fall back away from this, realizing the Elite Spears are online. That, that was the main issue I was uh, concerned about when it comes to Imperial Age Elite Spearmen. Elite Spears are just so damn good. Uh, but one thing to note is with uh, with Gambesons, if it does come through, I, I know that it's not yet through, but that's going to be an extra five melee armor. And I think that's probably the most uh, reasonable upgrade to get in this situation here. So CSO, he's only down by 14 vills, but you've got to remember that those villagers that he's down by are Mongol traders. Uh, and Mongol traders are incredible because I, I don't know what the numbers are. I haven't done them in a long time because trade feels like it's getting updated every patch. Uh, but the last check, Mongol traders were worth like 1.4 villagers. So you've got to take that number that Marine Lord's got and then calculate how many are uh, traders and then multiply that by, yeah, you know, 1.3, 1.4. It's a lot. Red Palace now going to be coming down. Where is he looking for it? He's looking to go a little bit defensive here. Not looking to take sacred sites. Now, the, I, I feel like this could be a bit of a mistake. He could look to throw this down right here. As long as he brings his army to cover for him, he will get that down. And that will hold down that central location. Alternatively, he could look for this top side. But remember, once the Red Palace comes through, he will have that um, extra emplacement on the keep, which will be able to absolutely blitz uh, pretty much uh, all units. There's the age up now. Coming through from CSO. Both players now in the Imperial Age. CSO. Marine Lord. Not the biggest... Not, not the easiest... Uh, difference between armies. Have a look at this. you got Marine Lord who's pretty much dwarfing his opponent at this stage of the game. Uh, about 30 population more when it comes to the military. He's almost maxed out. 198 of 200. CSO 170 of 200. Elite upgrades are on the way. He's going to be going for Arbola Trier. We still don't see those Gambeson upgrades coming through and still no crossbow stirrups, which is a bit surprising considering he's got 38 Arbola Trier just in this ball here. That is a really good return on investment when you've got that many units that are getting affected by that kind of upgrade. But now, beginning to move forward. Marine Lord looking for a way through. Red Palace is on the backside here, but I, I feel like this Red Palace is, it's, sure, it's, it, it's stopping your opponent from pushing up over on this angle, but at the same time, it doesn't really do much for you. Horseman, veterancy status is online. Ablutria up towards this north. And now looking to come around. Marine Lord entering into the base. The town center is going to be put under pressure. He's bringing everything together. Look how he's grouping it all up. They move so damn slow when you do this because he's got the cannons in it there on the backside. We're entering into the cinematic mode. It is time, ladies and gentlemen. Bombards teeing off towards the Kurultai. He wants to just get rid of them straight away. Needs to be able to take them out. That looks like the Kurultai will go down there. Arbola Trey do get the elite upgrades through. Need to stand their ground. Need to hold on. I don't even see... Wh where is... Where is Joan? Where did... Where is Joan? Did Joan go down? I don't see Joan. Oh, Joan's gone down. She's on the ground. I completely missed it. Look at her li lying life. He needs to call her back. But look at the defense. The Arbolatria defense. The unstoppable. Just when we thought CSO was dead. He says, no, Drongo. I am but alive, my friend. Cannon still moving forward. The health on it pretty low. He throws down the university on the front. He says, you know what time it is, Drongo? It's time to learn, baby. It's time to learn about the power of Jean of Arc doesn't have the ability to pay her back just yet. He's got a thousand gold in the bank. He could look to do it if he wanted to. Abla Tran number still doesn't have that Gambeson upgrade through just yet. Still no crossbow stirrups. He's probably looking for incendiary arrows, which is going to be fine. And Joe finally returns to the battlefield. Get her out. I don't see her. Where is she? Is she on that north side? I don't know where she is. I, all I know, she's returned to the battlefield. I just don't see... There she is. Get out there, Joan. Come on. What happened? You can't be letting the team down like that, Joan. Not like this. Now looking to fire off her hand cannon towards the front. Arbolatria working it down. All three sacred sites have been taken. Keep that in mind. Five minutes to go until that sacred defeat comes through for CSO. He is holding on for dear life. Less than five villages between these two. And now with Joan back online, it looks like CSO's defense should be fine. Little bit of ice skates, you love to see it, especially when it's downhill. Good stuff, Joan. Keep it together. Four ice skates on a horse. I tell you what, that's an incredibly coordinated horse. How much difference could have this Red Palace made if it was just here? It would have... I, I, I really don't understand this placement. Like, you, this could have been an outpost with a cannon emplacement on it. it it's... 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 It's mind-boggling. Anyway... Horseman now pushing forward. Not a whole lot to stop them. You can see Joan's got to be careful. Looking to focus her down. The, the, look at the uh, the crossbows, just how much damage they're able to do. She needs to fall back. She's got that little bit of extra damage if she wants to pop off. More horsemen coming through. No elite upgrade for them just yet. It is on the way, though. Gambeson's finally going to be coming through. It's a little bit late, though. And now, holding on for dear life, the elite horsemen are looking to surround. Biology is through for these horsemen as well. And I think this could be it. Marine Lord. 
after 39 minutes grinding out CSO in a series that's gone the entire distance. Looks like he finally may be able to close it down. Imagine if this Red Palace had been a little bit further up. It would have been a different story. Looks like Hand Cannoneers have also begun to join the fight. She's going to try and focus that back line, but it looks like today the game will go in favor of Marine Lord, the Frenchman rising when the stakes are at its highest. And look at the economy behind it. More than 8,000 resources a minute coming through compared to his opponent who's barely cracking 4K. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. The game has called and see... Or game has been called, rather. And CSO is taken out by Marine Lord, but what an incredible performance there by CSO. An incredible display. What a game coming out from him. Anyway, go check out EGC TV. I'll leave links in the description. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs> Ooh, I got to speak fast at the end of these videos.